Hi friends, today we are going to see demo on DML attributes. So uh, by the name you will, if you are from the Oracle background, you might have heard the cursor attributes, but this is not similar. It's, it's kind of a similar, but it's not working on the uh, cursor, rather it will work on the DML statement. So before we uh, proceed, like I would like to suggest you to please go through my blogs on the SQL scripting series. Uh, because that will give you more inputs on this demo and theory part. So let's start with the demo. So today uh, I'm going to use the same uh, database, uh, SQL scripting and the schema public. I'm going to create a table called employee and I'm going to feed some dummy data over there. And let's see what is the data. So now you can see that I have a five records and all of them have the salary of 100, right? So now before we start with the demo, I just want to give a brief introduction about DML attributes because it will might uh, feel uh, more comfortable when you know about what you are going to understand on the demo. So basically uh, DML attributes are looks like a cursor attribute if you have worked previously in Oracle but and its naming convention wise is also similar to that but it all the only difference is like cursor attributes only work with the cursor. So the uh, if you know the PL SQL uh, in Oracle, it works like cursor, cursor name, percentage, and then SQL percent found or SQL percent not found, something like that, right? So it is on the same line, but it's worked on the DML operation at uh, DML uh, uh, DML uh, operation, basically the insert, update, and delete, and not on the select statement. So basically, the SQL row count will give you the number of the rows affected by the DML statement. So say if you update a particular statement update or delete or insert so the if you have updated something and it have, you know, affected five rows it will uh, it will cap it will be captured by the SQL row count attribute and if say like this statement is true when the DML operation affects one or more rows so say if you update updated uh, SQL statement if you executed update statement and it didn't impacted anything then this SQL found attribute will be false. In in the same time, the SQL not found will be true and vice versa. So let's start with a very simple demo. As you can see, I'm using an update statement over here. So I'm using the NOS block to make my life easier. And uh, I'm just updating an employee table with a 10% increment on the salary where employee ID is greater than two. So if you see the table output below, so I have four rows, uh, all of them have 100 uh, salary, but I have five rows, but out of them I am I have just selected any employee ID which is greater than two. That means it will update the two, three, four and five with 10% bonus, right? And after that, I'm doing the select statement uh, on the employee table. And then I'm using the DML attribute, which will say if SQL found is equal to true, in that case, uh, you might get confused that the previous or the last uh, DML operation means like the last statement was not the DML statement, but there was a DML statement which was just before then select statement. So whether this attribute will say true or not that we will see and how it going to capture. So here I am using all the three attributes as well found. So if update statement or the last statement or is updated any single row so then this will be true and if it's true it will record the number of the rows impacted and then it will pop return the number of rows updated and if there is no update then it will just say no rows updated and that's it so let's see if a select statement is going to impact us or not so if i execute this it is going to give me updated four rows so now you will also uh, just a small question in your mind that the last statement was not the update statement. So uh, it's a bit different than how you have worked in Oracle. Like in Oracle, it always look for the last statement. And here, if you have used the select statement, so it will not going to impact your last DML statement. So this parameter, this attribute will only capture the values for the last DML operation and not in between any select statement. So it is totally uh, ignored by these attributes. So now 
you can see that I have said like it, it says updated four rows. Now let's go and select the employee table and see whether it's updated or not. So you can see that all the rows two, employee D two, three, four, and five has been incremented by ten percent. Now say if I say uh, employee ID greater than equal to six, and you can see on my table there was no rows with employee D six. So you will see that the, it will say no rows updated rather than update x y z rows see no rows updated because this parameter was true because this update statement didn't update anything and as i said like if you don't update if it doesn't affect any kind of ml operation then this parameter will be true and this will be false and the similar example we have seen over here so now if i go here you will see there was no difference on any of the rows so this is a very small example and uh, I believe this is the starting point for uh, in Snowflake where they are slowly introducing all the good feature of SQL scripting, the way you can use the SQL uh, in a more uh, uh, natural way how we were used to with uh, in the previous uh, other DB, RDBMS. So this is a small enhancement which I see which I feel very nice but slowly I, I assume that Snowflake will come up with lot more feature into the SQL scripting site. So that's all for the today's demo and if you like this demo please uh, subscribe to my channel and like my videos. Thank you.